Sup guys, how are you doing? This is Midi. I thought my second to last video was pretty negative because, you know, the London riots isn't really a good image of Britain and stuff, so I thought I'd do a bit more pleasant one that will hopefully be interesting and, you know, maybe even change your view on the world. Because, I mean, um, I saw um, most of these things, well, not most of them, but a few, when in America in the airport, because, like, as you're going into the aeroplane, there's like these things by, I think it was HSBC, but I can't remember which bank in particular. I'll put a link in the, in the uh, description with a link to all of these facts. So uh, if you want to read them for yourself, then you can. But um, yeah, basically going through the, uh, no, American airports, there's like these HSBC things with like random facts in the world. And uh I find at least some of them to be pretty insightful, so I thought I'd share them, because, I mean, I find it interesting, hopefully we'll, you will too. So, <coughs> if you excuse me breathing into the microphone, I'll move it away a bit, but... Okay, I'll start off with this one. There are five times more people learning English in, in China than there are people in England. Now, at first I read this as there are five times more people learning English in China than there are people learning China in... Chinese in England, but no, it's just, fi if you imagine five times the English population, put that in China, and that's basically what it means, but if you turn those people to be Chinese as well, and then replace the English people with English people, but, <coughs> I didn't explain it too well, but you know what I mean, but, I don't know, that just sort of shows that England is still pretty important, even if the even if the rights like degrade that image, that you know, Britain isn't all that decivilized and everything. It's only places where there's just these idiots doing shit. But okay, next point. Um, 0.3 0.3% of Saharan solar energy could power Europe. Now, that's not even an hundredth of the solar energy in the Sahara. And Europe's a pretty big place that's got big power consumption, so it doesn't seem a lot, but it's actually loads, isn't it? So, um, the thing that surprises me though, if we if we've actually worked out these figures, why aren't people trying to, you know, put in 0.3% of solar energy into the Sahara to power Europe? I mean. The main reason I can think of is with solar, you know, solar panels on roofs and solar tiles and everything, is that gives businesses like profit and you know they say, I mean like so solar panel companies like Mitsubishi or Canada Solar or whatever like that, they'll probably sell it to anybody just to you know get the solar panels out there and make some money, but I know um you. Blech. People will probably make more money out of putting the uh, solar panels on houses in England, because that way, you know, um, it's like 15, 15 grand for a 4 kilowatt array or something, but if you put it in the Sahara, you wouldn't be getting that, like, fixed payment, you know, it, I mean, I'm sure the sun is strong in the Sahara, like, all the time, but there's a bit less of a guaranteed payment, if you see what I mean. Because, you know, it's like saying to a person, okay, you owe me 10 grand, I'll give you this, okay, deal. You can't just, like, go up to the sun and say, right, if you shine on this spot, and you give me my money's worth, then we've got a deal, alright? It's not quite like that, but... <laughs> um, next one. Only 4% of US films are made by women compared to 25% in Iran. And that's about six times as much women making films in Iran, as it seems. But, I don't know, US is a pretty damn big place, so they probably have quite a few more films. But that's just hazarding a guess. I, I don't really know anything about the Iran film industry. Um, the next one is comic books are more popular with Japanese adults than American children. I don't really have anything to say about that because we all know it's true. The next one, Holland makes more exporting soy sauce than Japan. Now, is is that importing it, storing it, and then it exporting it for more, uh, like a higher price, 
Or is that manufacturing it too from like buying the beans and separating them out into all the different stuff? But one thing I'm not sure about and I would like you guys to tell me is how does the importing or exporting system work? Like Guinness, you know, the like Irish beer draft stout company, whatever it's classed as. Like if they if they only had a factory in, in Ireland, in Dublin, I think, but one of the like big cities, but if they only had that one factory, would it always be an export? Like if you bought Guinness from there in, whilst in England or America, that would be export, wouldn't it? Because they're exporting it from Ireland. But, like, if they had other bre breweries and you went in the same country as the other breweries... Bre oh, that's a hard word to say. Brewer breweries. Yeah, sorry about that. Tia, tia, tia. <laughs> no, that's just another video where someone can't pronounce something, which is pretty funny, but... um. Yeah, if you're in the same country as these other breweries and you drank their Guinness, then it would be imported. Because, oh man, I don't know, the system just confuses me. But anyway, next one. The US has more Spanish language newspaper readers than Latin America. But once again, the US is huge, so it's probably true. Uh, Hong Kong has almost twice as many skyscrapers as New York. I've been on top of the uh, Empire State Building, which I think is about a thousand feet above the ground uh, ground level. But I'm not sure if that's true. I just had a quick look on the internet, and that's what came up. So having a guess, that's what it is. But um, about 80% of all life on the Earth is found in the ocean, which covers 71% of the planet's surface. Well. Planets, uh, well, oceans can be pretty deep, and uh, you know the massive places. So it sounds right. And 71% of the surface, if you have an atlas, spin it round, you can tell pretty easily. Now, I know that the um, oceans are like split up into the sunlight zone, and then the twilight zone and the midnight zone. Sunlight is like you know where there is sun. I think twilight's where the like sunlight stop and I think the twilight zone is like very thin so you get like a mix of animals that are like need a little bit of sun on ones that don't need any and then there's the midnight zone which is like pitch black and this covers 90% of the oceans it's got absolutely no light it's got extreme pressure and it's the uh, temperature is almost freezing so you've got to be like some hard mofo to live down there but um, I'll also put a link to these details in the description because um, I find this fact pretty interesting in particular. And it, does it give anyone else a sense of exploration to find what these other um, life forms are in the oceans? If you could actually like not die from going in the ocean at that pressure and everything. Um, next one. The amount of gold beneath the ocean could give everyone on, on the earth a hundred thousand euros that's definitely not a hundred euros that's a hundred thousand um that's when you first see that you'll be like oh my god but how much would it cost to extract this and you know they probably use the current market price of gold but if there was that much gold going around to give everyone a hundred thousand at the current market price or you know then surely it'd only be worth like 10p <laughs> but I mean gold's worth a lot but if you have more of it then it will go down sort of like with currency won't it but also I don't know how that system works so if you do know then just tell me um, I'm going to rush through these like real quick now right now there's over half a million people travelling through the world by air so safe journeys to them 20% <coughs> of the world's wind energy could provide all its energy needs I think once again that brings us back to the Sahara point, why don't, why don't people just do it and try and make us, our planet live for longer, because we've given it enough crap. Um, two thirds of the world's billionaires make their fortunes from scratch, so if you have a dream it seems you can chase it and it'll pay off pretty well. I mean that's inspiring, because two thirds is the majority, although it would have been slightly better if this fact said uh, two thirds of people on an income that can pay them for themselves to live healthily end it from scratch but 
I do have one fact left, but I don't quite have time. This is like 9 minutes 55 now. But anyways, thanks for listening, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time. Peace.